Good day, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Langer at the Mic. This is a very special episode of Langer at the Mic because we are joined by an awesome guest today. He has over 30 years of broadcasting experience. He has worked for numerous networks in both North America and Europe. He has called hockey, basketball, Olympics, and more. He is my TV announcing instructor, but he's better known for being a former Hockey Night in Canada play-by-play -play announcer. He is Paul Romanuk. How's it going today, Paul? It's going well, and uh, I like the tie into the school. So, of course, if this is a crap interview, then you fail the course. <laughs> <laughs> yes, College of Sports Media. Obviously, shout out to – I forgot to mention sports media there, right? Um, but thank you so much for joining the show today. Really, really appreciate it. And, uh, and I know you had a, a game of golf yesterday. How did that go? Uh, not bad. You know, not bad for me. Just played nine holes. Uh, I think I was uh, seven over par. So I'm, I'm happy. For me, that's good. I'm happy about that. that. That's actually solid. That's like uh, 80 strokes or 70. What is that? 80, I think? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, I guess uh, bearing it out. So I shot a 42. It's a par 35. So 84. If I, sh if I oh, hit wow. Played. But, you know, you know, golf, right? Nine holes is nine holes. Another nine, it could all go wrong. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, like, like, would you consider, was it nine hole or was it 18 holes? Just nine. Just oh, okay. Nine. Okay. Okay. Fine. Just because, uh, so would you consider yourself like a good golfer? Like one of those guys that's like losing balls left and right at every uh, hole, what would you say? I'm an aspiring good golfer. How's that? Fair enough. Me too. Like, like, I guess you play golf just for like, um, like, just like me, I play golf for like that two good shots that I'll have in an, in a given day. That's the whole thing. It, it, <laughs> it's an analogy for life, isn't it? There's always, there's always something good that brings you back and makes you want to push forward. So you're right. You you a couple of good shots, sink a long putt, everything's good. A hundred percent. So, uh, so let's get into broadcasting a little bit here. Cause that, that is uh, both of our, or your profession, my aspiring profession, right? Um, but, uh, we're, in broadcasting, we're supposed to be objective for sure, but I'm just uh, in this show so you know we're going to have a lot of Montreal people listening. We're going to have a lot of Toronto people listening to this uh, particular episode, right? So with that being said, who was your favorite team growing up as a kid? When I was a kid, my favorite team was the Montreal Canadiens. Oh, good call, good of, call. Well, there's sort of an explanation <laughs> to it. I grew up sports uh, for most people is whenever they were in their sort of very early teens um, because at that time in your life uh, you don't have a job you haven't discovered girls yet uh, and you, you're you know you live sleep eat breathe you know I, and so uh, in the 70s the Montreal Canadiens had some great teams and where I grew up in a antenna there was a little device where you could aim the antenna uh towards the signal to get a better picture so on a saturday night if you aimed the antenna from oshawa if you aimed it west you got the cbc affiliate and you got the ontario feed of hockey night in canada which was the toronto maple leafs mm -hmm. if you aimed it east towards peterborough ontario you picked up channel 12 in peterborough which would carry the national feed on a Saturday night of Hockey Night in Canada. And back then, that was always the Montreal Canadiens with Danny Gallivan doing the play-by-play. -play. And Danny was my play-by-play -play hero. And so I watched the Canadiens, and he was as big a part of the Montreal Canadiens to me as Guy Lafleur, Steve Shutt, Ken Dryden, Doug Risebrow, any of those guys. He was a big part of it, and that's why I was a Habs fan. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. I think you mentioned that in our uh, in our orientation the other day, right? It was uh, Danny Galvin, and uh, did you also mention uh, Dick Irvin as one of your uh, as one of the guys you aspired to be? The the guys who were my sort of play by play heroes in no particular order were Danny Galvin, uh, a guy named Dan Kelly, uh, who's who's no longer with us. He, uh, you know, I guess probably. Um, you know, people in your demographic is he's the guy who called the 1987 Canada Cup, you know, so Gretzky to Lemieux, he shoots, he scores, Mario Lemieux with the 126 remaining or whatever the call was. So that was Dan Kelly, great pipes. Uh, he did a bit of hockey night in Canada, did that big international tournament. And he was also the radio voice of the play by play voice of the St. Louis Blues. So you would hear him at night. Uh, on KMOX radio, which you could pick up after the sun went down. And then number three would have been Bob Cole uh, when he was in his prime, you know, back oh, yeah. in the 70s and 80s. Nobody could bring it like Bob. So th those three guys were, were the guys who I wanted to be like. 
Yeah, and and Bob Cole, I mean, it's just awesome the longevity of his career. You know, going from uh, you know we got started like in the seventies or the eighties, right? Uh, and then he, I think his last year was two thousand seventeen or twenty eighteen. I want to say something like that. Yeah, yeah. They, um, I'm trying. I think it was the eighteen nineteen season. I want to say was his uh, this sort of the last few games that he did before uh, before he retired. And you know that was. I know Bob a little bit. Um, not more professionally than personally I've met him many, many times. And Bob was a guy who, um, you know, he didn't want to retire. He wanted to keep going mm-hmm. and it, it was going to be a, a tough call for who, whomever it was that was going to have to say, Bob, you know, it's, it's time to retire. Uh, so, uh, you know, I would guess he's still not happy about the fact that he's, he's no longer calling games. Yeah. Um, but, but I, I want to bring it back to you now. So uh, speaking of Bob Cole, I, f- I feel like, you know, when I first heard you, I think on hockey night in Canada, like I actually, like you sound a lot like Bob Cole to me, you know, you, you did sound like Bob Cole and I feel like your, your style, like you like to get really excited and like, and, and immerse into the moment, right? Some announcers don't do that so much. So, when you're doing the national media, like like it's one thing to obviously be objective in terms of not biasing for one team or the other, but uh, talk about uh, talk about the fact of being like subjective, subjecting yourself to the excitement of the game. Do you know what I mean? Talk about that a little bit. Well, it, it wasn't hard to be objective. I mean, this is a funny thing that uh, you know, especially with uh, with social media, you know, you get all kinds of chirps about uh, you know. Uh, this guy's biased against this team and this guy likes that team. I can tell you hand on heart that there is not a national level play by play announcer that I know and include me in that list who could give a rat's ass about who wins or who loses. You don't care. You, Mm -hmm. it's a job and you were there Uh, for me. uh, And, and I think I can speak on behalf of most of my colleagues on a national level, uh, Gord Miller, Jim Houston, Chris Cuthbert, all those guys who I know. Um, it's all about the TV show. You, know, you want it to be an entertaining and compelling broadcast that people will want to watch from start to finish. And it's all about that. It, you know, I don't, you don't go home if your team loses. And quite often you don't have a team. I mean, I, I didn't have a team when I was doing it. I honestly didn't. The closest I came to that was in the 1990s. I was uh, the play-by-play voice of pretty much every international hockey game that was on television in Canada. I was at TSN and I did the World Juniors, the World Championship, the Women's World Championship, all the Team Canada games. And you know, were you slightly more excited when Team Canada scored a goal? Yeah, you probably were. Uh, but even then, and I, I've heard some of the broadcasts back, you, know, you still, a big goal is a big goal, whether Canada scored it or whether the Russians scored it. And uh, I prided myself on, on being objective that way. And I, I took the same approach when I was doing Hockey Night in Canada. Yeah, like, and I, I know you've called, uh, you know, WHF, right, and the Olympics, like I mentioned in, uh, in your introduction, right? Um, and so what would you say you enjoyed more? Like, would you, did you enjoy the, you know, the local, the, the Canadian National Hockey Night in Canada broadcast or the WHF, Olymp, or international events? So what, what would you prefer, what, what did you enjoy doing more, the local or Canada events or the international events? What would you say? Well, it's, it, they're two very different things. Uh, I mean, I, I was, uh, and I'm very proud of the fact that I got to do Hockey Night in Canada for four years. Um, you know, any play-by-play announcer in Canada of any sport or any television host of sports in Canada, that's still the gold standard. You know, that's the show. Hockey Night in Canada is the biggest sports show on in Canada on a weekly basis during the season. So to have been a part of that, uh, was an honor. Um, however, and, and doing NHL hockey, doing play-by-play for the best league in the world is also something that's fantastic. However, on a personal level, when I look back on my career, the games that are by far the games and events that are the most memorable are all built around international hockey because there's there's something special about calling a game when you have your national team out there wearing the flag country's name on the front. There's an extra added dimension of, of drama uh, that makes it a little bit more compelling. And on top of that, 
it's just where you got to go. I mean, I, I called hockey games in, you know, Zurich, uh, Berlin, uh, I mean, Dusseldorf, I could go like all over the place in, in Western Europe in particular and in Eastern Europe. And all of those cities are really different. What's not that different is Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Dallas. I mean, they're all, especially the NHL now, there is a sameness to all of the arenas. Uh, and so in terms of, to answer your question of things that are memorable, I think of, wow, I remember when I was at the world championship in Bern, Switzerland. Wow. I remember when I was at the world championship in Prague, uh, in the Czech Republic, just after the wall had come down. Uh, wow. I remember when I did a world championship in Zurich. So those are the, the events that are more memorable, uh, between the two for sure. Mm, excellent. Um, and uh, and going back to hockey a little bit here now, what would you, I know you tell us not to do that, uh, back to hockey and, you know, come up with segues, but um, so when, I want to also ask, like you did say you're a Habsan, so I'm glad that you admitted that to our audience, that you were originally a Habsan, maybe not anymore, but at what point did you have to, you know, become, I guess, objective? Was it the moment you started broadcasting or was it when you started doing play-by-play for the NHL on Hockey Night in Canada or for TSN in the 80s and 90s? Um, probably a little bit of all, but um, it, it's a different broadcast world now. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think that just, again, going by, by social media chatter, I think what people want now, that they, they tend to love the local guy they want a homer they want holy mackinac we got ripped off this is that's what people want uh if in that case you know joe bowen doing the toronto maple leafs uh rick Janaret doing the buffalo sabers they want a homer when i came up what was drilled into you was objectivity you, know, mm-hmm. you were there broadcasting the game and you owe it to your audience to be objective. So to give both sides of the story, to be equally excited uh, or appalled, depending what the case may be. If a call went against one team that seemed like an egregious call, if there was a great play by somebody on one team, you made a big deal of it. It didn't matter what team they were on. Uh, And I think the best broadcasters, the national broadcasters all do that. But having said that, maybe that's not what people want anymore. You know, maybe they want holy Mackinac. We were ripped off. I can't believe this team. The ref's terrible. Maybe that's what people want. I don't know, but that, that was never anything that I was able to deliver. Even when I was a, a, one of my first jobs was doing the Oshawa Generals games in the Ontario Hockey League on the radio in Oshawa. I was the voice of the Oshawa Generals. And I can remember uh, some management with the team being pissed off at me on a few occasions when I did what I feel was being objective. Uh, you know, talking about, well, you know, uh, for example, a penalty call saying, well, he kind of deserved that. He pulled the guy down as he was heading towards the net. You can't do that. You're not going to get away with that at this stage of the game. What I think fans now want to hear is, I can't believe the ref made that call. That's outrageous. He's out to get us. That's what they want to hear. And maybe that's what management wanted to hear. But it was never anything that I was able to do. Well, I think that's also something that you guys talk to us about, right? It depends on whether you're working for the, for the national media or for the local media. So if you're doing Oshawa Generals hockey, there's a very little chance that someone from, from Nova Scotia or, or British Columbia is listening. It's probably all Oshawa Generals fans, right? So that's probably why they want to hear that, that, that more subjectivity or favoritism to, to, um, to their team, right? To their local, their very local hockey team, right? But then when you're in the yeah, national media, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I, and I hear you, Mike, and, and I think that probably uh, that view is is maybe the prevailing view, and uh, and I'm showing my age a little bit and out of step with that, but I, I <laughs> was always of the belief, uh, even when I was doing Oshawa Generals games, I was always of the belief that you can't fool the viewer or the listener, and you have to be honest with them. Um, if, if uh, to, you know, to use that example I gave, if there's a penalty called against your team, uh, one of your defensemen hooks an opposing forward going towards the net at a crucial stage in the game and gets called, um, even if you say it's a horrible call, you're going to lose a bit of credibility, in my opinion, with people who are watching, even if they're, in that case, a Generals fan or a Leafs fan. Uh, hockey fans, especially in Canada, aren't stupid. They're going to know that that was 
that was a bad that was a bad decision the defenseman made made to pull that guy down. And if you don't call it like it is, if you are a homer, then I think you lose credibility as a broadcaster. That's what I believe, and that's why I tried never to do that. Well, I also think that there are certain degrees to it because, I mean, if you look at the one hand, you know, you look at uh, Joe Bowen, you look at Rick Jeanerette, you know, they, they are, I guess, more in favor of their team, but they aren't, they don't take it completely over the top. They still call the game the way it is, right? It's just that when the Buffalo Sabres or the Toronto Maple Leafs score, they're more excited versus when whoever they're playing scores. Um, so honestly, I, I, I agree with that style as well. And I just like, if that's how it's going to be, and if that's what the audience wants, then we got to give it to them. Right. Um, but you've also called a lot of, uh, obviously a lot of Montreal Canadiens games in, in recent years, right? Unfortunately, we don't have uh, as many great memories to, 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 to reminisce from recent years, as opposed to, you know, the nineties, eighties and seventies and before, but um, I came up with four moments that, uh, that you called for our Montreal Canadiens. Uh, I have the, the PK Subban goal in game two against the senators. That was a game time goal. If you remember on, um, on ham, on the hamburglar. Right. And then, Alex Galchenyuk scored an OT winner in that same game. It just turned around, fired at the net, right? I remember the game. What a game. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. There was that. There was also the, the, the crazy game, too. It always seems to be game two uh, against the, uh, the New York Rangers in 2017. There was uh, Thomas Blakanitz who just opened up his blade and just deflected a shot in off Lundqvist. And Radulov just buried one in, in tight for the game winner. So of those four moments or any others that you can think of, what was your favorite moment to call as part of a, uh, in your recent years with hockey night in Canada? Well, recently, I mean, those are some pretty good examples. Uh, you know, I was lucky enough to do a couple of playoff series for hockey night in Canada. I remember when I got the call, um, I, I want to say, uh, my memory fails me here a little bit. I, I, I want to say it was the 2015 playoffs and it was Montreal and Ottawa were meeting yeah. in the first round. And when I got the call to do that series, it was, yeah, I mean, that was really memorable for me. Both on a, the, the hockey was really exciting, really some great storylines, um, you know, bananas buildings in both cases, which is always fun to call a game. And, and a short drive also, right? Between the two. And, and a short drive too. So that, <laughs> Not a lot yeah, of traveling. That was great. Uh, that was, yeah, I have some great, great, uh, you know, professional memories and also personal memories. Uh, worked with just a fantastic crew. Mike Johnson was uh, the booth color guy and Mike is – you know, for my money, if, if he's not the best color commentator in the game, he's, uh, he's, you know, he's right, he's right there. He's a fantastic color commentator, certainly one of the best I ever worked with. Uh, Glenn Healy was down at ice level. Again, for me, Glenn, the best ice level between the bench guy that there has ever been, you know, just fantastic. Uh, worked with them, also worked with uh, the producer was a guy named Shirelli Najak, who's like the, you know, the A producer for Hockey Night in Canada. Uh, so that was just incredible. That was a dream come true. And you know, on a personal level, I, I was, I can remember sitting in the booth before the first game, just going, I, I can't believe this is happening to me. I'm, I'm, I'm calling not only a hockey night in Canada playoff series with the Montreal Canadians, a team I used to idolize as a kid. Um, but it's, it's Montreal and Ottawa and a great rivalry. And it, it was fantastic. So that was a modern rivalry. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then, and the other one would be, uh, it was, I can't remember the year, but it was one of those weird things. I was at TSN and I was the main NHL play-by-play caller there. This is back in the nineties. And I called the final game at the forum in Montreal. 95, uh, right? December 95. Yeah. It was the, it was the Montreal Canadians and the Dallas stars. It was really bizarre. Uh, you know, that, that's another story for another podcast, but the, you know, the NHL for some stupid reason decided that the final game at one of the most iconic buildings in the league was going to be, you know, not Montreal, Toronto, not Montreal, Boston, uh, not Montreal, the Rangers. It was going to be Montreal and, you know, th that team, they have a storied rivalry with the Dallas stars, <laughs> but, but because of that, uh, the way the TV deal was structured, it was a TSN game. It was a weeknight game on TSN final game at the forum. And uh, that is I weird, was on a chair. Uh, Gary green was the color commentator. Howie Meeker was there as well on the broadcast. And the thing I remember the most was the, 
amazing ceremony that they had before the game started and then afterwards where, you know, I want to say it was even Aurel Joliet came out and started passing the torch around and it went to the Rocket Richard and then Henri Richard and it got passed around. It was just a stirring moment. And I, that's a really memorable one for me involving the Canadians. Yeah, like that, I mean, that, that is weird that you have the Dallas Stars and the Canadians on a weeknight on, again, all due respect to TSN, I love TSN, but just typically you would see that on, on Hockey Night in Canada to close out a, um, you know, the, the forum, right? Again, it's like yeah. you said, the Leafs or the Bruins on Hockey Night in Canada in December on a Saturday night as opposed to a weeknight against the Dallas Stars. But that must have still, like you said, it must have been a, a tremendous experience to, to be in that building for those, uh, those ceremonies, 100%. Hey, I, I don't care how I ended up there, but I did end yeah. up there and I had the honor of calling it. So I'm, it's all good for me. Exactly. A hundred percent. Now, here's the other thing. Like I said, we also do have a lot of Leaf fans uh, that will be watching this episode of Langer at the Mic, right? So um, why don't you give us one of your best Leaf moments? What would you say were some of your best uh, Toronto Maple Leafs moments that you've been a part of? Well, I did a ton of them because I, uh, I did some of their games on Hockey Night, but I did most of their games for uh, the four seasons that I was with uh, Hockey Night slash uh, Sportsnet, I was also the regional Leafs voice. Uh, by far, not even close for me, the most memorable Leafs game that I did was Austin Matthews' debut, uh, right. regular season debut in a Leafs uniform. It was in Ottawa. It was against the Senators. And, uh, you know, it was that amazing first night that he had. That was a national game. Uh, I can't remember whether it was hockey night or whether it was, um, you know, one of the other configurations they have, but for me, not even close. That was the biggest leaf game that I was ever lucky enough to call. Yeah, it was, uh, I believe it was a Thursday night in 2016, right? Right at the beginning of the 2016 season, right? Um, yeah, like uh, that was, that must've been great. Like, um, I mean, again, I, that's more for our Leafs audience here, but I'm glad you're a part of that and able to deliver that call for, uh, for Canada. It was incredible. It was, you know, I mean, there was obviously a lot of build up around Austin Matthews debut. And I, I called a couple of preseason games where Austin was playing and you could already see, I mean, the, the guy had it. Uh, and that first game, you know, you're always a little bit prepared uh, because of odds were pretty good. He was going to score a goal. Uh, but not only did he score a goal, I mean, he had the night that he had. Before, was, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it was, <laughs> it was incredible. And it, I remember, you know, he got the first one. It was kind of a scramble around the front of the net, and he, he chopped it in. The second one, to me, was the most memorable because he started just outside the blue line, uh, worked his way in over the line, undressed Eric Carlson uh, coming off the left-wing boards, and then powered towards the net and fired it home for his second of the game. Uh, that was the nicest goal that he scored. And you just sort of went, wow, this is going to be a night. Then he got the hat trick. We had a great shot of his uh, his mom and dad sitting in the crowd watching and all of that drama. And then he got the fourth and, you know, you wondered if he was going to get a fifth or not. And, and, and all that, the Leafs that, fans there, of course, right? Yeah, as usual, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, lots of Leafs fans make the road trip. and uh, it, it, But that was a great, great night to be a part of. Excellent. Uh, so we have about five minutes left here and uh, let's get into some Beatles talk because I know you have your own Beatles podcast, correct? Yes, I do. The Walrus was Paul. Look for it on uh, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere. It's uh, Give it a listen. Yeah, yeah, like I, you told me already, so I won't play stupid. It's more for our audience. But um, I, I asked you this in class, but why don't you share again our, with our audience your favorite Beatles album and why? It's sort of, uh, I mean, I've, like many people of my generation, and I think of, of younger and older generations, uh, the Beatles hold a certain fascination. And, uh, and I've, you know, the Beatles had pretty much split up, you know, by the time I was growing up. Uh, so I discovered their albums sort of in reverse, not as they were actually coming out. But I love their music and have, have been a lifelong, me and tens of millions of others around the world who bought their records, uh, a big, big Beatles fan. So uh, I wanted to do this podcast after I'd stepped away from sports for a while, just to kind of change gears. Uh, I'll do some sports podcasts coming out later. But for, for this one, what it is, is I interview Canadian music people, and we go through track by track their favorite Beatles or Beatles solo record. And you asked me to pick one, and my standard answer is I can't. It depends what day it is, what week it is, what kind of mood I'm in. If I'm picking today, 
uh, I think I would probably pick the Beatles album Help from uh, which was the soundtrack to the film of the same name because I just love the that era of the Beatles so 1965 66 and around there I love the the tight three part harmonies that's sort of their 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 character their character sound uh the playing on it is great and the songs are really good so as we sit today, that would be my favorite. Ask me next week, and it'll probably be. Yeah, because on, on Friday, I believe you told me it was it was uh, please please me. You said I think right. So yeah, today they're, is they're, how- they're for, yeah their first record. <laughs> I just finished recording a podcast with uh, with a couple of guys who talked about please please me. So I'd been listening to that, and again that one just the raw energy and the great playing, and they're such a tight band at that point. Uh, you know they're probably playing two hundred and fifty dates a year, uh, and they sound great. So that. I mean, that's, yeah, exactly. Uh, you asked me then, that was my favorite. I've got a different one today. I'll have a different one next week. Excellent. So, um, so I have one more question for you, Paul. And thank you so much again for joining the show today. Um, but who is your pick to win the Stanley Cup? Oh, man. Vegas Golden Knights, Dallas Stars, Islanders, or Tampa Bay Lightning? That's a tough one. Uh, and I got to be honest, I haven't been hanging on every single game. Um, but I'm going to throw, uh, I'm going to throw Tampa out there. Yeah, that's a good pick. I, I don't know. I tend to agree with you there. I'm cheering for Dallas cause you can see behind me, right. I'm cheering for the Dallas stars, but, um, but yeah, I can, I can vouch for Tampa. Not a lot of, uh, my, of our Canadians audience would like that very much, but, um, and actually I'd also be down for the Islanders to win because of the whole Tavares storylines. But yeah, I, I could agree with you on Tampa for sure. Uh, you know, and I, you know, I like John Cooper as a guy, uh, worked around him a lot during uh, my play by play days. Uh, Steven Stamkos, you know, I, I think he's kind of, he's kind of in the, uh, the OV category right now where you're, you're waiting for him to, to win a cup and kind of, put some validation, whether that's right or wrong, uh, the bow onto a fantastic career that's had so many great individual accomplishments. But I mean, right now, if you look at it, I mean, Stamkos has been out for, for quite a bit. I mean, so it's been mostly Braden Point and Kucherov carrying the team, right? So, so what if the Lightning win without Steven Stamkos? What would that storyline be like? Or without well, him in the lineup? Would, I suppose it would be bittersweet, right? Um, I'm, I think they would do... I gather they would do everything they could to get him at least dressed for a game. Um, so I guess the sweet would be he would get his name on the Stanley Cup. The bitter part for him would certainly be that he wouldn't have played as big a role in the accomplishment that he would have liked. Yeah, so, uh, but we'll see. I mean, right now they have to get the Stanley Cup finals first because, you know, they only, they did win 8-2 in game one against the Islanders, but I believe game, sorry, they won game one, 8-2, and um, their next game I think is tonight, game two, right? So we'll see how it goes in their series against the Islanders. And, uh, and yeah, we'll stay tuned. So, um, hey, Paul, thank you so much again for joining the show today. Um, this has been an episode of Langer at the Mic Live. If you want to see more special guests like Paul Romanuk here, then be sure to subscribe to my channel, press like, and, uh, and check out my Twitter and Instagram accounts in the description below. But, uh, yeah, this has been Langer at the Mic. Thank you for watching, and see you again next time.